grandmother was the mother of the church and I was the oldest grandchild. Many days I would go by her home to talk to her. She taught me a lot. And some days when I would get to that old wooden house, tears would be running down those wrinkled cheeks. By me being the oldest boy, I always thought I could help her. I used to ask her, I said, why? Why are you crying? She would look at me and say, son, you're too young now. You're too young to understand my tears. She said, but just keep on living. And friends, today, I can understand her tears. I'm not ashamed to tell the world. Sometimes I have to cry. And some days when I would get to that old house, she would be humming and moaning on songs. And, and she, sometimes she wouldn't come out and say the words. And I would say to her, why are you moaning like this? She would say, son, when I moan, it, it confuses everybody. It confuses the devil. He doesn't know what I'm moaning about. Now, I'm, I, I may not be able to moan like a lot of people, but I believe I can moan a little bit like my grandmother. If she was still with us today, she would sound something like this. In my mind, I can hear her sometimes. Working and washing and ironing in that old wooden house. Seems like when she would moan, it would make the work easier. And in my mind, friends, sometimes when I'm riding along in the bus or flying through the air, I can hear her humming sometimes like this. Listen. I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. Amen. Calling all praise and worship team. Let's move it. Because if the Lord needs somebody, hear mine. Send me. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go, if the Lord needs somebody, here am I, Lord send me, I may be crying. 
crippled, but I'll go. I may be crippled, but I'll go. If the Lord needs somebody, here am I. Lord, I may be motherless, but I'll go. I may be motherless, Lord, I'll go. What's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? Oh, he's all right. Tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Oh, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, he's all right. He's He's all all right right now. He's all right. Oh, he's all right. He's all right now. Tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Oh, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, tell me, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, he's all right, he's all right. He's all right, he's all right. What's the matter with Jesus? He's oh, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, tell me, what's the matter with Jesus? He's oh, what's the matter with Jesus? Oh, he's all right. He's all right. He's all right. Oh, he's all right. He's all right. Oh, he's all right. Friday morning star. Oh, Lily of the Valley. Friday morning star. Oh, tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Oh, what's the matter with Jesus? He's all 
alright. Lord, tell me what's the matter with Jesus. He's alright. Oh, what's the matter with Jesus? He's alright. Oh, he will feed you when you're hungry. He's alright. He will feed you when you're hungry. He's alright. Oh, he will feed you when you're hungry. He will feed you when you're hungry. Oh, he's all right. 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 Oh, he's all right. 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 Oh, tell me what's the matter with Jesus? He's all right. Let the church say praise the Lord. Let the church say hallelujah. God is good all the time. We're giving praise and honor to our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. To the right, Reverend Samuel Lawrence Green, Sr., our prelate of the 7th Episcopal District. Ms. Phyllis N. Green, our Episcopal Supervisor, the Reverend Dr. Novell Gulf, our residing elder of the Edisto District, to the memory of his wife, Sister Ann Marie Wilson Gulf, Reverend Walter Poche, Evangelist Green. Sister Poche, Sister Levine, to all of our officers, Sister Wilhelmina Green, Sister Washington, Sister Jennifer Leash, Sister, all of our officers, brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We want to say good morning. And those on Zoom and Facebook, we thank the Lord for this opportunity. Once again, I am the Reverend Clifford Levine, the pastor of Bethel AME Church, 4595 Savannah Highway, Charleston, South Carolina. Uh huh? Ravenel, South Carolina. But we just thank our God for being good and we thank Him for His blessing, His kindness. And for all things the Lord have done for us. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. The call to worship. I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. I'm trying to uh, bless it. Well, let me see. Those that planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. Thank you. 
keep solid before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us sing praises to the Lord as we sing hymn 403, What a Wonderful Change in My Life, and after which we'll ask Brother Wendell Maxwell to take us to the throne of grace. Hymn 403, What a Wonderful Change in My Life, What a Wonderful Change in My Life Has Been Worth Since Jesus Came Into My Life. I have Light in my soul, for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my life.
God is God is He's my hope He's my hope He's my strength Shelter Yes, he is. Shelter in the time of storm. Yes, he is. Walk in the weary land. He's my walk. My everything. He's my everything. Joy in the morning. Joy in the midday. My everything. Yes, he is my everything. Yes, yes, he is. My everything. Oh, he's my rock, rock in the weary land, shot in the time of storm. He's my everything, coat on my back, shoes on my feet, my everything, yeah, everything, yeah. Well, God is, God is, God is, God is, hey, God is, yes, he is, God is, God is, let me tell you, God is, God is, yeah, my every. By everything, yes, yes, he is. Don't you know he is? My everything, woke you up this morning, started you on your way. It is good, it God good. It is your everything, is he your everything? He is everything, God is so good. My everything. My everything, yes he is, my everything, everything, Help on my back, shoes on my feet, yes he is, yes, yes he is, my everything, my, 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 my everything, my everything. Well, God is, 
God is. God is. God is. Can you tell me? God is. Let me hear you say it. God is. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. God is. Yes, he is. God is. God is. I said God is. Yes, he is. God is. God is. Oh, God is. God is. Yeah. My everything. everything. Praise the Lord. He is my everything. Only God. Hallelujah. My A to Z. That's what I say to God. You are my A to Z. Everything. I'm here to read the Old Testament scripture coming from the book of Genesis chapter 12 and it reads 1 through 4 then the Lord told Abram leave your country your relatives and your father's house and go to the land that I will show you. I will cause you to become the father of a great nation. I will bless you, hallelujah, and make you, I read that, I will bless you and make you famous and I will make you a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. All the families of the earth will be blessed through you. Verse four. <clears throat> so Abram departed as the Lord has instructed him and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. This is the reading of God's word for his people, and the word is already blessed. Amen. Amen. Happens all the time. Our New Testament reading, Romans, the fourth chapter, verses one through five, and I am reading from the New Living Translation. Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But Abraham was not, but that was not God's way. For the scriptures tells us, Abraham believed God, and God counted him righteousness because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous not because of their work, but because of their faith in God who forgives sinners. Amen. Amen. <laughs> See? <laughs> See? <laughs> From all that dwells.
They are bridge to the summary of to the Deccan law. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Hear what Christ, our Savior, saith: Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hangs all the law and the prophets. Let the church say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the church say, hallelujah. hallelujah. It's time now for our benevolent offering. We're going to ask you to let us do the class leader system. Those on my left, if you would pass your offering down to the left, and likewise on those, those that's on the right, if you would pass it toward the center aisle. We would appreciate that very much. For we thank our God for being so good to us. And we know that God, he is worthy to be praised. You've heard it time after time that you can't beat God's giving. No matter how hard you try, you just can't do it. We're going to ask this choir, if you will be kind, and give us something soft, some, some happy music that make you really want to give to the Lord. Let the church say, praise the Lord.
Lord, we come to tell you thank you. Lord, thank you, God, not just because you gave us the opportunity to give, God, but because you gave to us first. And, God, we just want to return a portion of what you have blessed us with back to you. And we pray, God, it will be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom here on earth. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Trouble will be over. Sing it like you mean it. Trouble will be over. When I see Jesus, trouble will be over. Oh, trouble will be over. Trouble will be over. Oh, trouble will be over. Morning, Bethel and friends. Trouble will be over when I see Jesus. What a wonderful song. I love that song. Thank you. Our notices and announcements. On tomorrow, Monday, March 5th, we will have a church anniversary committee meeting. Information will be sent out later this afternoon, but if you're on that committee, we will meet tomorrow via Zoom um, at 7 o'clock p.m. The WMS monthly meeting will be held this coming Tuesday, March 7th at 5.45. It may be 6. I wasn't able to contact Sister Johnny to see if it's changed. But be prepared for 5.45 on Tuesday, um, March 7th, and immediately following at 6 o'clock, we will have our lay monthly meeting at 6 o'clock on Tuesday, March 7th. It's at 6.30. I'm sorry, 6.30 for the lay meeting and 5.45 for the marriage. And we ask that you all um, join us. If everyone who was in that attendance on yesterday, you know that all of us should be in Bible study. So we ask you to please join us on Sunday at 7 o'clock for Bible study via our Zoom. We have it on the board. You can write it down if you don't. Um, I am just so mixed up today. It's on Wednesday. Well, those of you who are avid Bible study scholars, you know we meet on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock via Zoom, and the information's on the board. If you don't have it, please contact me, and I'll be glad to send it to you. Let's see if we can get this right. 
On Monday, March 13th, at 7 o'clock p.m., we will have our official board meeting asking all officers and members to please be present, especially our class leaders. Church anniversary midway point is this month, March 19th. We all know what the asking is, so if the midpoint is 300, what's the asking? Thank you very much. We're asking all members to please try to be at your halfway mark if you have not paid anything. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, been um, paying on this since September of 2022. So if you have zero on your name, so we're asking you to pay monthly um, so that when the anniversary come, you won't be taxed yourself so hard to pay the full amount. Some of you have already bypassed 300, and some of you are almost at 600. We say, to God be the glory, we thank you for the work that you're doing. And we're asking those who have fallen behind to please do your best to get caught up. On the third Sunday, March 19th, will be our midpoint Sunday. We're asking everyone to try their best to at or near $300. Thank you. And don't forget the Sons of Allen Oyster Roast will be held on March 18th, um, Saturday, March 18th, from 12 to 4 p.m. Tickets have been, um, tickets should have already been sold. Tickets are $25. At the door is $30. This is the Sons of Allen only um, fundraiser, so we're asking everyone to please support them as well. Reverend Levine will be speaking at Bethel AME Church in Greeleyville. I think last week I might have said Greenville. Greeleyville, South Carolina. This is his first church that he's um, preached at, and he's asking all officers, members, and choirs to please be in attendance with him on that day, March 19th at 3 o'clock p.m. The Eddystow District Week of Holy Joy will be held here at Bethel Ravenel, March 20th through the 23rd, nightly at 6.30 p.m. We're asking everyone to please be present if you can. Trustees, parking attendants, make sure that you're out here early. Um, this is a district-wide event, so we want to make sure that everyone is safe when they arrive here at Bethel. More to um, come. Our condolences and prayers goes out to Brother Herbie Brown, Jr. and family. His wife's sister passed away, and we're asking you to keep that family in prayer. The funeral service will be on Thursday at Wesley United Methodist on John Zowie. 10 o'clock a.m. So um, please keep Brother Herbie Brown and family in prayers as they um, go through this time of bereavement. And we also like to keep the Bias family and Maxwell family in prayer also. Asking that you remember to pray for our sick and shut in, Sister Mabel Maxwell, Brother Terry Singleton, Brother Anthony McKnight, Brother George Williams, Sister John Dell Singleton, Sister Sarah McNeil, Brother Ernest Doctor and Brother Joseph Dawson, please keep them in your prayer. Give them a call if you can, if you can't visit. Okay, the Ravenel Railroad Run, a four-miler run, March 11, 2023, cash prizes and awards will be given. This is the first annual Ravenel Railroad four-mile run starting at E.B. Ellington Elementary School and ending at the Ravenel Town Hall. And if you're interested in running, if it was one, I probably would, but running in. If you're interested, please see me. I have registration information. Registration is $45, and there will be cash prizes given out to different um, areas. Wesley United Methodist Church uh, will be having a breakfast on Saturday, March 25th, at, from 8 to 11 a.m., and the uh, menu is here, but tickets are $10. Please see me if you need further information. On yesterday, we had the Eddystone District Development Day, and we say, said on last week that we always can learn something new. Well, as much as I've attended these developments, I learned something new on yesterday. And we're saying that I am sure that Bethel, all of you who were there, that you learned something. I'm so proud. Bethel came in second place. We had registered 27 people. And out of the 27 that registered, 23 was in attendance. So give yourself a hand. Yeah. And um, when they called Bethel for second place, I thought Pastor Levine was going to jump through the roof. <laughs> 
but we are so, so happy and so thankful to the officers. We had some that were there that were just, not just, but because they are great part, that was members that's interested in knowing how the church run. If you are interested in knowing why we say things, why we do things, this is where you need to go. And we are encouraging everyone to, to read the discipline and understand what it is that your duty, because every member of Bethel, every member of the AME church has a duty in the church. It's not just the officers that carry the load. It seems like it, but we all have a duty to do. And we would like to also congratulate Sister Marie Laxon. There was a question that was asked. It had something to do with the books and psalm, and I was racking my brain trying to come. And Sister Marie Laxon said the answer. Give her a hand. Like I said, there's always something that you can learn, because I didn't know that it had something to do with the books and psalm. How, how many? And um, I, everybody was saying 100 something, zero, and Sister Lapson stood up and said five, and she was correct. So congratulations, Sister Lapson. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to recognize those that are visiting with us. We ask that you are, well, before we do that, let me look at the birthday celebrants, because I would like to recognize one person particular today. Um, the first name you see on this list is Mildred Jameson. Is she here? Yes. Please stand. Please stand. On March 1st, Millie, as we so affectionately call her, celebrated her 80th birthday. Give her a hand. And doesn't she look good, guys? Yes. Okay, also celebrating birthday, uh, Adesha Lloyd, um, Phoenicia Flowers, Angela Brown, Ironette Bonaparte, Bernard Parker, Nathaniel Maxwell, Ida Maxwell, John Dell Singleton, John Lloyd Jr., Reverend George Brown Jr., Yanari Leach, Vera Maxwell, Kalia Prillo, Imaje Nixon, Imari Nixon, and Laverne Brown. And on... Um, May, uh, March 27th, Reverend and Mrs. Victoria Levine will be celebrating their 47th wedding anniversary. I would sing happy birthday, but y'all know I'm just, can't do it by myself. Thank you so much. Many more. Um, I ask that you keep uh, Brother George Williams in your prayer as he was on the sick list and as they were singing happy birthday, I turned and George, Brother Williams is there, stand. <laughs> to God be the glory. At this time, it gives me great pleasure to recognize those that are visiting with us today. If you are visiting and you would like to be recognized, we ask that you please stand and state your name. We say, as always, thank you to Mr. and Mrs. Brown and Mr. and Mrs. Watson for your attendance. Thank you. Oldest sister of the Maxwell family. Um, my sister Debbie is here as well, and we are here to, to help celebrate my aunt Millie's 80th birthday. Amen. Amen. And I bring you greetings from Greater Bethany Baptist Church under the leadership of Daryl Edward, and my church is Central TME Church under the leadership of Roscoe McKinney. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much to uh, my family as well. We say we are so happy to see you as well. And may God continue to bless you all. May you have safe travels on your way back home. Again, thank you all for visiting with us. On behalf of Reverend Levine and Sister Levine and the Bethel AME Church family, we hope you that you enjoy yourself and God bless you. Thank you. Good morning, Bethel. Good morning, Bethel. Good morning. All right, sound a little better. Let the church say amen. amen. All right, um, I'm looking for the male choir. Uh-huh. The male choir, thank you. And the rest of the George Brown singers to accompany myself and Reverend Levine on the third Sunday, March 19th, that is, we heard the announcements this morning, but I'm looking for uh, a full choir to go out and represent pastor, because I want to, uh, I want to rock the house. <laughs> is that all right? Yeah. And we want to go and have a good time. We ain't going to show off. Look at somebody and say, but we're going to have a good time. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Let the church say praise the Lord. Praise Thank you so much. May God bless each and every one of you and to all of the birthday persons. We pray that you have many more a birthday celebration as you've had uh, this week or this coming week. Uh, we just pray God blessings upon each and every one of you and to Sister Levine for 47 years. But we just thank God for being so good to us. It, it, it's just a blessing uh, to know that, you know, 47 years, that's a good while. And uh, I just keep, I told the wife, I always try to just hang in there. She keep up with the time. And that's what I'm doing. So we just thank the Lord for those wonderful years. And I really enjoyed all of it. In fact, since elementary school, she was, you know, visiting me. So we just thank God, not, you know what I mean, she always come to, by the classroom and check and see how I was doing. And uh, she would always bring me a little gift. <laughs> Let the church say, praise the Lord. But we thank God for being so good. And we thank you for all of what you've done. And um, Sister Latson, you didn't hold that. This was the um, award for yesterday. From yesterday, Bethel came in second place um, on yesterday with all those. So this was the amen. Let's give them a hand. Give. Amen. So we just thank the Lord for being so good. And we thank each of you, those that attended the, okay. May the Lord bless and keep each of you once again. And for those that attended the development training on yesterday, we just thank God for those that attended. Um, I didn't see who all had showed up, but we thank you for coming. And it was very informative about much. So we just thank God for each of you that had attended. And once again, let's give those persons a hand for doing a wonderful job. Uh, we just thank God for being so good and, and, and we blessing to see Brother Williams with us. Yeah. Yeah. And Sister Vera Maxwell and family, let's give them a hand. Yeah. Amen. We just thank God for each and every one of you and we thank you for all that you are doing for the ministry and for the work. Uh, we just pray God blessings upon each and every one of you once again for all that was said and done and may the Lord continue to bless and keep you in his care. Let the church say thank you Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, let us enjoy Jesus. 
heart of a storm. Rockin' a weary land. Rockin' a weary land. Rockin' a weary land. Food on my table. Joy, feel of peace. Enjoy Jesus. Enjoy Jesus. Shelter in the time of a storm. Enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I don't know about you. I can have a good time. I'm enjoying Jesus. Everywhere I go. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. All day Sunday. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. He is my rock in a weary land. He is a shelter, shelter in the time of song. He is a lawyer, lawyer in the courtroom. He is a doctor, doctor in the sick room. Anybody in here know him? Anybody in here know him? Anybody in here know him? I'm a toy in Jesus. Everywhere I go, I'm enjoying Jesus. While I got this chance, while I got this chance, came all the way here, came all the way here, came all the way here to enjoy Jesus. You ought to tell somebody, I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. I'm enjoying Jesus. Not, not, not Buddha, no Muhammad, no. Talking about Jesus, I'm enjoying Jesus. Oh, yes, I'm enjoying Jesus, hallelujah. The Lord enjoying Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 feeling mighty happy. 
some of the time, but all the time he is good. And we thank him for his blessings and his kindness and for all that he is doing in our life, even at this very moment. We have much to give God praise for because we're able to see each other's. And that's a blessing all by itself. That's enough for us to give God praise. For we know that he is worthy Hallelujah. of all of our praises that we send up to the Lord. We just thank God for, for each and every one from our praise and worship. Up to this point, we want to thank each and every one of you for all that you've done. And we're asking you to just continue to let us pray and trust God and knowing that our God, he is good. And we know that he is worthy to be praised. Some said, every time I think about Jesus and all that he's done for me, some say, my soul cry out. Hallelujah. Uh, we just thank God for blessing us. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you one more time to thank you for your blessing, for your kindness. To just have an opportunity one more time. I don't know about tomorrow nor the next day or beyond that point. But Lord, we thank you for this moment that you blessed us. And we're asking you, God, to just saturate us and send down your Holy Spirit in this place. Help us to know, God, that you want us to give you praise and glory for all that you have done. And now, dear God, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let every heart say amen. 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 And for those that have your Bible, if you will turn with me 
to the gospel according to St. John, the third chapter, verses 1 through 7. And I'm reading from the New International Version. John 3, verses 1 through 7. You'll find these words. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who come from God. For no one could do or perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, very truly I tell you, no man can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked, surely they cannot enter a second time into the mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and of the spirit. Flesh give birth to flesh. But the spirit gives birth to spirit. In verse 7, you should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. You must be born again. In case if those don't really get the message, I just want my neighbor to look at your neighbor and tell them you must be born again. In case if you did not look at the other one in behind you or the next or the, to your left or right and tell them you must be born again. Amen. Ain't nothing wrong with saying that, just reminding us of what we must do. There are many important things in life. But there are only one that we need to be mindful of. We find out and we learn that there are so many things going on in our world. But the most important thing we should be mindful of is that we must be born again. It's not so much about money or houses or land that some of us are mostly concerned about. But our priority should be be born again. As Jesus and Nicodemus had a conversation. But let us just look at what the scripture tells us. You must. It's imperative requirement. You can't do without it. You can't make it to be with God without this being born again. Out of whatever going on in our world. I know we are concerned about everything that goes on all around us and everything, but our most, most important circumstances or situation, the most necessity that we need is to be born again. It's not 
it may be or perhaps this is something that we must be born again. As John teaching us and remind us on what we need to do. We all acknowledge and realize that all of us are here because we was born by flesh. And this is the only way we will be able to make it here on earth is through birth by flesh. We know how we got here. But we find out that Jesus was talking to Nicodemus and told him that you must be born again. We know that we was born one time. But he's telling us that if we want to see the kingdom of God, we must be born again. Let the church say, praise the Lord. But look at Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. He was a member of the ruling council. He was one who teach the law of God. He was one who taught and instruct people from the law as to how to live. Nicodemus was this man. Nicodemus had his training. He went to school and he learned the law and he interpreted the law and he knew how God wants us to live. Not only that Nicodemus taught us how to live, but he was one, first of all, through his schooling and his zeal to know the law of God. He was elevated. He worked his way all the way up to the top. Because of his work skills and because of his knowledge and his understanding, because of his character, he was one who lived a good life. He was one who was respected in his community. And as he worked his way up to the top, somebody saw something in Nicodemus and wanted to make him one of the leaders of the council. The council is 71 person that they interpret the law of God, uh, teaching others how to live for God. This was the highest level that anyone could obtain. Just think of our Supreme Court. One of the highest court in the land. And we know the last uh, justice, Justice Latanya Brown Jackson. It was a process that she was selected or chosen and voted upon. But everything was all right. As Nicodemus was the top on the, the Sanhedrin, he was one of the judge among the 70 others. And he would always think about how can I continue to do my work. Nicodemus had everything he wanted. Some said he was a rich man. He found out that even for his position that he was in, teaching and instructing others how to live. But it was something else that Nicodemus wanted that he did not have. He needed more knowledge about Jesus. You can have the whole world. But if you don't know who Jesus is, 
Jesus is. If you have not been born again, you would lose out on everything. Let the church say, praise the Lord. Yes, Nicodemus thought he had it all, but he heard something about Jesus. Something, I believe, the wheel on the inside of his heart. Curiosity just start turning over and over again because he heard about Jesus. It should be something burning on the inside of us that would spark our concern about who Jesus is. Nicodemus was one of the highest from this Sahedrin, Sahedrin group. He was making decisions for others on how they ought to live. But he knew that something else was needed for his life to be completed. For the Bible tells us that Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. I don't know if he disguised himself to go out to talk to Jesus because his work and because he was such of a high stature, he didn't want to be seen when he talked to Jesus. So he slipped out at night. They didn't, he didn't know if Jesus was tired from the day's work. For the Bible tells us that Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. And he tells us that when he went to Jesus, the Bible didn't tell us about the conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus. But I do know that while they were talking, Jesus said, you must be born again. So I believe in my heart that somehow Nicodemus was talking to Jesus about the kingdom of God. And when Jesus talked to Nicodemus, Nicodemus told him that we know. So that's evidently letting us know that it was a group of them talking. He said that we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. So there was a conversation in the council about who Jesus was. They knew Jesus healed the sick. They knew that Jesus gave sight to the blind and unstuffed deaf ears. They knew this about Jesus. But Nicodemus was curious. He wanted to know more about him. There is nothing wrong with finding out more about Jesus. Because Jesus is our way from earth up to glory. And I believe in my heart that everybody ought to know who Jesus is. Some say he is my lily of the valley. Some said he is the rose of Sharon. Some said that he is my way. Some said that he is my rock in a weary land. Some said he is a shelter from the stormy blast. Some say he is my all in all. Yes, let the church say praise the Lord. But I believe as that conversation continue, Jesus and Nicodemus. Jesus said that a man must be born again. Now, Nicodemus is a religious leader. He was one who instruct and tried to encourage others to do right, that when this life is over, that we would be resting with the law. And as the conversation continued, I believe Nicodemus 
began to scratch his head. Because he did not understand what Jesus meant when he said that you must be born again. I believe Nicodemus said, uh, I'm six foot tall. And I wear a hundred and two hundred pounds. And he wanted to know how can I go back to my mother. But Jesus said, it won't be like that, Nicodemus. Nicodemus had a problem to understand what Jesus was talking about. But Jesus was letting him know that you must be born again. As Jesus talked with Nicodemus, Nicodemus asked the Lord, Lord, how can this be? Jesus told him that flesh give birth to flesh, and the spirit give birth to spirit. So in other words, what the Lord is saying, that is only one way you can be born again. And that is through the spirit of God. Uh, this is what Nicodemus and Jesus' conversation was all about. Just reminding us that we know we're born from flesh. So what Jesus was telling Nicodemus, uh, that you must be transformed, not from the outside out, but from the inside out. And the only way you could be born again is from the Lord working on your hearts. And the Lord works on your mind. Uh, because if you have a dirty heart, you can be baptized in the water. But that would not cleanse your heart. So we need the Spirit of God to work on our hearts and mind. Because when the Spirit of God worked from the inside out, there would be a change in your life. And this is the only way a person could become to be a new creature of the Lord. We must let the Spirit of God work on us. I don't care how much you say you've been born again. If you're still doing the same thing, something is wrong somewhere. Yes, God was telling Nicodemus, I know you had all of, have all of these degrees on your wall. He said, I know you have your, 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 your money invested in the bank. He said, I know you own everything. But the Lord said, until you find out who I am, and before you realize the change that would take place in your life, he said, I want you to know you must be born again. And not of the water, but of the Spirit of God. I wanted to have a witness here. I'm just giving what the Lord gave me. Because some folk think that I can make it to heaven by my works. But I stop by to tell you, work will not save you. Some believe that I'm going to make it into the kingdom of God by paying my tithe. But if your heart has not been changed, and if you have not been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that's why the Lord said, you must be born again. The work wouldn't save you. Singing on the choir won't save you. Being a preacher won't save you. But we need a change from the inside of our heart. And that change will not take place until we seek the kingdom of God first. And when we allow the Lord to work on the inside of our hearts. And because when... God work on the inside that everything going to be all right. I just wanted to have a witness here this morning. I just stopped by to encourage somebody here this morning. 